Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, we're ready for our next panel. I would like to now introduce you Mr. Attila Matas. He's the head of the Space Publication and Registration Division at the International Telecommunication Union. Please. Good afternoon. We are just a couple of minutes at noon, so we are afternoon. Uh, probably a little bit to increase the, because next is quite noisy. Uh, so I hope you will be hear me. And I try in a short presentation to present to you the most critical outcome of the WRC 15 related to orbit spectrum, especially to the satellite communication. And I try to finish quickly to give room for your questions. So the World Radio Communication Conference was held in Geneva last year in November. And just for you to understand that the World Radio Communication Conference is the only one ITU conference which is authorized to modify the ITU radio regulation, which is a legal bindings document and which is an obligation to the member states to follow it through the member states to the satellite operators through the licenses. So in fact, the radio regulation is mandatory also to the satellite operators. It was a quite big conference most 4,000 participants, 162 countries, so you can read the outcomes on the link which is on the presentation. It was covering everything from mobile broadband, emergency communication, leap second, aeronautical mobile, fixed satellite, climate change monitoring, weather forecast, so all the aspect of the frequency spectrum was covered there. One of the most important thing Probably you heard about the disappearance of the Malaysian flight MH370, where the flight went out of the radar tracks, which is normally around 160 miles, and after then it disappeared somewhere. Based on this tragical accident and based on several other tragical accidents of the disappearance of, of uh, aeroplanes, the ITU Plenipot Conference instructed in 2014, just one year before the WRC, as a matter of urgency to consider and find a solution for the global flight tracking without any restriction to cover 100% territory of the world. So WRC find a solution on the satellite-based global flight tracking, so the satellite now authorized to receive the ADSB signals from each airplane and after them to report it to the ATC controllers. So the resolution 425 is authorizing now to use the ADSB for global flight tracking, giving the surveillance, real-time surveillance, practically anywhere. We are going now from 30% terrestrial coverage, I am repeating again, today the aeroplane can be trackable 160 miles by the uh, terrestrial radars and after that it's up to the captain instructions if he will report or not report following all the rules. But now with the GFT it will be a global flight tracking, doesn't matter if the plane is middle of the Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, wherever the global flight tracking will guarantee the coverage. The next agenda item which created also quite big uh, interest and noise was the regulation how to do the CNPC, that's why the control and non-payload communication for the drones. We call the drones the unmanned aircraft systems in the ITU regulatory language. And I am stressing that this CNPC and drones operation 
in the non-segregated airspace. So we are talking about the non-segregated airspace where this UAS will fly like aeroplane in the non-segregated aerospace and there, there will be a satellite component of the, of the drone. So in fact, the CNPC, which will operate under ICAO standards uh, and the UIS will be in fact the earth station in motion, which will be connected to the uh, to the satellite through the communication links so the operator can be anywhere in the world and drone can be on the other side of the world and all the communication will be through the satellite uplink and downlink guaranteeing the CNPC channel of the uh, control under ICAO rules. So it's a quite complex resolution and I invite you to study it quite deeply if you are interested in it. The next agenda item again, everything is now in motion. Everybody of us, where we wish to go, we go for holidays on the cruise ship, we travel with a train, we travel with a bus, we would like to have a broadband. Broadband have to be everywhere. So now there was a request and that, uh, WRC responded in the resolution 156 with a solution on the earth station while in motion where the earth stations, when they are on the service area of the GSO, GSO satellite, when they remain in the envelope of the service area, may be used for the broadband communication in the fixed satellite service. This is also quite, quite important, quite important item when up to now, practically the broadband was only the terrestrial broadband and certainly in several parts of the world when there is no broadband, terrestrial broadband, the earth station while in motion is a very important aspect. The other thing, because we are on the Astronautic Congress, it's a very important thing also. It's a small thing, but very important that up to now, the EVA, the extravehicular activities in the space were limited to five kilometers, nothing more. Now WRC accepted the request from the scientific community, NASA, ESA, and other agencies through the proposals to remove the five kilometer distance limit and use the frequency band 410, 420 megahertz for the distances even greater as five kilometers for the EVA operation. Other item which was on the WRC, and it's quite funny, probably you are surprised that WRC is dealing even with the leap second. I know that uh, some of you say this is totally archaic solution, somebody is saying it has to be kept, but to have a short, WRC 15 decided to continue at least up to WRC 23, that's why up to 2023, to keep still the leap second adjustment, the plus minus leap second every two, three months when it's required to, to uh, keep the time scale as a UTC, the adjusted UTC time scale. It's a small item, but it's created extremely hot discussion practically through the whole WRC because the timing, the precision, who, what type of timing, adjustment every three, four, six months, it's creating a really absolutely serious problem for a synchronized networks which depends on the absolute correct time. Uh, the other very hot debate was the C-band, where the mobile broadband is requesting for more and more spectrum and one of the potential bands was also the C-band. But WRC15 confirmed the protection of the C-band because Please understand that for several regions on the world, especially the 
tropical regions, they cannot go up uh, in the KUKA band because of the rain density, because of the propagation. For several regions on the world, the sea band is absolutely vital. There is also a heavy investment. So finally, WRC decided not to accept the request of the IMT, the mobile industry, and all the identified different bands, the 14, 27, 15, 18 for the IMT uh, studies, but to protect the C-band and only some small portions of the C-band, 200 megahertz, is allowed in some regional allocations. Uh, other very important thing of the WRC is to decide to speed up the processing and remove the six months API processing. So as of 1st of January, the coordination process of the satellite is starting from the coordination request. There is no more API six months delay. So a coordination request notification. So the process is much faster. WRC 15 introduced resolution 40, which is in fact uh, tracking the orbital positions when the satellites are coming back after suspension, bringing to use uh, to avoid any speculative misuse of satellites of other country, uh, ghost satellite moving on the orbit, allowing to bring on use and move away. So the resolution 40 is now requesting administration to identify the spacecraft which will be used with great, great details. In the same time, WRC uh, strengthened also the uh, provisions which are related to the bringing new suspension and the maintenance of the master register when confirmed that the Bureau is authorized to verify from any publicly available sources if the system is realistic or no. And if the Bureau is requesting for clarification, administrations are obliged to respond to Bureau and tell details about their satellite system. They cannot stay silent on the satellite systems. Uh, now, subject for you. I hope the IAC will take note about this item. Uh, WRC with resolution 763 introduced a quite, quite important resolution requesting the ITU to study the suborbital vehicles. Because up to now in the radio regulations, we have aeroplanes, spacecraft, clearly defined. But, uh, and there is a silent agreement that around 100 kilometer is the uh, boundary between, uh, between the aeroplane and Earth's atmosphere and space. But with the suborbital flights, aircrafts which are flying close to 100 kilometers. There are some uh, vehicles which are flying on non-orbital trajectories up to 150 kilometers, returning back, upper stages, etc., etc. We have to make a definition what is the suborbital vehicle and to find frequency bands for this operation because the suborbital flights cannot use aircraft frequencies. The aircraft frequencies are well defined in the zones the aircraft's up to 30 kilometers, so if a uh, suborbital flight uh, vehicle up to 100 kilometers will use aircraft frequencies, it will pollute in a huge area, creating harmful interference to the aircraft. But in the same time, uh, cannot use space frequencies because it's not a spacecraft. So it's necessary to define, and uh, IT is starting to study, and this item for the next four years period, and we are very happy to invite you also with any inputs through your member states or if you are members of the ITU study groups about the suborbital vehicles. Other item which is uh, also oscillating here on the IAC is the small satellites. If you remember, in one of my presentations on the previous IACs, there was a famous resolution 757 asking for uh, studies 
for the relaxation and facilitating deployment and operation of small satellites uh, in the terms of the radio regulations. I'm sorry to say the WRC 15 decision was that there is no need for a special treatment and WRC 15 suppressed this resolution saying that CubeSat, SmallSat, whatever sat from 10 centimeter up to one meter, from one kilo up to five tons, can be geostationary or non-geostationary. And if it's a non-geostationary satellite, as engineers, we cannot classify satellite by a weight or size. We can classify satellite only by frequency, power, bandwidth, and especially services. What type of the service this CubeSat or small satellite will use. And after then, this service have to follow Article 5 and other provisions of the radio regulations. But to help to the small satellite community, there is a slight modification now in the terms that there is no more CubeSat, small sat, but there is a new term for the studies for the TTNC frequencies for the non-geostationary uh, satellite with a short duration of mission. So they are typically three years mission where these satellites with a limited lifetime have still a problem to use the TTNC, which frequency bands. So now ITU is studying in the frequency bands below one gigahertz excluded amateur satellite frequencies, excluded the 144, 146, excluded the 435, 438 megahertz band. So studying and another bandwidth band which can be used after then for the TTNC of these satellites. Uh, that's very quickly about the most important items. And my last slide is saying about the uh, WRC agenda items which will come again. We will come, let's say, which was mentioned there several times, we are coming and studying now the machine-to-machine -machine communication, especially for maritime railway, road transport. There is a agenda items continuing with the suborbital flights, the Earth's resources, climate monitoring, safety development of aeronautical and maritime disaster communication system, uh, lessons learned from the ESIMS, the Earth Station while in motion, so, and extension of the frequency band studies up to 450 gigahertz for the land and fixed mobile services. So, last slide is showing you the summary from where you can download free of charge what's of information which I mentioned here, WRC final acts, radio regulations, ITR recommendations for your studies, for your projects, and when you apply for a license uh, for your satellite project. That's all from my side, giving chance for you so, for some questions. I can talk about WRC one hour, five hours, half day, one day, one week. We normally do one week workshop about the WRC outcome, but uh, I would like to finish here and give you a chance for 10 minutes for questions. The drones. Exactly. Yes, it was it was part of my presentation. If we go back, if you can load this, if you can load my presentation back, if they can load the presentation back. If no, I will come. There is a resolution which I, I presented, and uh, yes, uh, just a second. So
So this is the drones, resolution 153 of the WRC 12 about the studies and the resolution 155 with the, all, the resolution is one of the most complex resolution which were in ITU up to now drafted with 19 results. The frequency bands, they are all details I will provide to you after the presentation because there are segmented several frequency bands in KU band, KA band, lower KA, upper KA. So there are frequency bands for the drones from practically from 12 giga from the lower KU band up to 30 giga in different fragmented frequency bands which is authorizing the uh, unmanned aircraft systems, okay? More questions? Thanks, Attila, for this nice overview. I have basically two questions which are related to each other. Uh, the first is, if I want to set up a constellation with in KA band, I remember there is what was called the teledesic band. So the question is, could that be used still? The second question related goes to KU band. So there was, I think about a year ago, SpaceX saying, we own the Skybridge frequencies. So, can you comment on these two remarks? Okay, thank you very much. It's not directly related, but okay, I understand that you would like to compete or beat OneWeb and spy, SpaceX, so okay, certainly. Uh, some of you probably remember that this was the first project uh, in 90s when Microsoft came with the 700 satellites, fiber optics on sky, uh, teledesic, etc., etc. It was a famous uh, resolution, if I remember correctly, uh, 1118 of WRC 15, uh, asking for the studies. But because uh, this system was never brought in use, I would like to say you the basic principle. You can have whatsoever frequency bands for whatsoever system, but up to the moment that you don't notify to the Bureau your frequency assignments and you don't declare that your system is in use, you have no right for international protection. You don't have right uh, for, for the recognition complete only when it's in bring to use. So this system was never brought into use. There is no exclusive allocation for it. I recommend to you to study uh, resolution 143. I can provide to you after then of the radio regulations, which is calling for the high density non-GSO FSS systems and proposing the bands which can be used for this, including the KU band, including the KA band, but without any priority of and ownership of anything. Same for the ownership of the SpaceX, whoever. Please understand, radio regulation is as when you s submit a filing, it's per administration. So if one administration submitted a filing, it's impossible to sell this filing or buy or transfer. There can be only exception is a political change if there is a split of country or one country ceases to exist and replaced by other. This is the only exception, but there is no way of the transfer of the filing in orbit from one to other. If it's remain in the same administration, this is different story if the administration is keeping and the operator name is changed is a different story, but no trafficking and selling the satellite filing. Okay? More questions? Yeah. Uh, thank you. A very comprehensive presentation. 
Uh, as a housekeeping matter, are these charts going to be posted somewhere? Oh, I hope yes. If no, give me your card. There is nothing secret. I can tell you the truth. I have between 25 and 30 slides. This I did a short just to be in time because really it's a shooting to lack uh, presentation that I'm killing myself that somebody will laugh. That's the WRC. He presented this in 10 minutes and everybody will laugh. So come to me and I give you if I, I, 60 I, slides I, presentation on WRC. I, I like the, the way you curated the slides to the most important ones. So yeah, I, yeah, I like yeah. the No problem. No Thank problem. You. Certainly. So we are close, close at the end. If there is one question, maximum. If no, after then, have we same Geneva. Bon appetit. And see you next time. Thank you very much.